Hey y'all, we're at um, Calvary Cemetery and in 1899 it was called the Catholic Cemetery. And that's where our story today takes place. J.A. Moore and his wife had been having problems in their marriage for about 18 months. They had been attending the Salvation Army and had been very active there when rumors started spreading about Mrs. Moore. Mr. Moore was very upset over this and he gave her a beating. She packed up the kids and moved to Kansas with her folks. After a while, she came back to work on the marriage. They started attending the Salvation Army again and became very active when rumors started spreading once more about Mrs. Moore. This time, the Salvation Army asked them to stop coming to the meetings and the couple split up. Mrs. Moore and Cadet Souther from the Salvation Army were seen often on Garrison Avenue together. And when Mr. Moore stopped by the house to see the kids, Cadet Souther's was there. This caused Mr. Moore to be enraged. On the day of the murder, Mr. Moore ran into Cadet Souther, Mrs. Moore, and their small daughter on the avenue, which is Garrison Avenue in Fort Smith, like the downtown Fort Smith. Mr. Moore asked Mrs. Moore if he could talk to her. She said some other time. He said, okay, and they went on their way. They walked some distance to the Catholic Cemetery, now called Calvary Cemetery, where we are at now. They walked across the Catholic Cemetery into the Jewish section, sat on a bench under a tree when Mr. Moore appeared. He asked Mrs. Moore if they could talk in private. She said, what you have to say to me, you can say in front of Southers. Mr. Moore said, what I have to say is none of his business. Cadet Southers chimes in with, I walked her here and I'll see her home. Mr. Moore pulls out a gun and starts shooting at Southers. Southers, Southers runs behind a tombstone and then runs and dives a head first over a fence. Mr. Moore grabs Mrs. Moore around the waist, puts the pistol to her cheek and fires the gun and then puts it to his head and kills himself. The police take Cadet Southers in for questioning and release him. But the Salvation Army are going to hold their own investigation. Southers turns in his uniform and says he can't live up to their rules. He says he's going to the territory to care for his elderly mother. And I believe that the territory that they're talking about is over into Oklahoma. So let's walk around and see if we can't figure out where this crime scene was at. Let's see. We're going to just walk it. We'll just walk it. We'll go over to the gate where they probably came in. This is the gate. That where they probably came in. They walk across, and this is the Catholic section. They walk across the Catholic section over to the Jewish section. Now, I walked all over the Jewish section of the cemetery. And there were, up in front here, there weren't a lot of stones. Most of the stones were, these are all newer ones up here. There are a some uh, newer ones back in the back, but most of the older ones start back in this section back here. But we are still in the Catholic section, and I believe the Jewish section, that's hard for me to say, Jewish section, I believe it begins here. You see where the fence changes, where it's a, like an iron metal fence and then it you have a rock wall plus on the stones on the right to me have crosses which would be christian and to the left of me you start seeing some of the um, 
Hebrew lettering and the Star of David on these stones over here. So we are now in the Jewish section. But these stones up here in the front, they, in 1899, these weren't here. I'm going to walk back and show you where the older one started. Because Cadet Southers runs him and hides behind a stone. But none of these stones were here at that time. This had to be just an open field. Back here, let me see. Oh, there they are. These are where they start. So here are some really old ones. I wanted to show them to you anyway. So this is where the older ones start. See, these are 1870. This is 1870 right here. So this right through here is where the older ones start. 18, no, that's 1923. Okay, no, I was wrong. That was the birth date. The death date's 1927. But these two were. So even these weren't here. Even this whole section wasn't here. But these two were. Because these date, death, 1882 and 1869. Oh, wow, look. Abraham Wolf was born in 1797 and died in 1869. 1797, isn't that crazy? And Esther Wolf was born in 1802 and died in 1882. But most of these, I'm going to lay my, my notebook down. I read to you today instead of trying to remember it. So this section back here, Cadet Southers dives behind a tombstone. So it had to be in this section back here for him to dive behind. Let's see how old this, this uh, mausoleum is. If it says somewhere, it's got to say. I just don't see a date. My gosh, there's got to be a date. But anyway, these stones back in here, there's some older ones. Let's see what these say. No, that's 1918. But the two I just showed you over there, not that this is, yes, 1899. Okay, so see, this one was here. <laughs> um, that's a big one. 1899. I like that too because it's got this got the bobble up here on top. 1899. Let's see if we can see a date on this one. Mm. 1893 on this one. Can't see. I think it says 1873 to 1893. So that's a young person. I hate it when I see the young young ones. They didn't get to live out their life. They were cheated in a way, I feel like. But anyway, so this section back here is where we start seeing the older ones. There's a fence over there, but I just don't see where diving over that fence is going to help you any. It's not going to protect you. So did he, did he dive behind one of these stones back here? Which there weren't very many. I mean, there's a lot of smaller ones which aren't going to help you. The first two that I showed you, that possibly those could, those, you know, are big enough to hide behind. I think some of these over here may be older. This one is, let's see, 1872. So he could have hid behind that. You know, that was definitely here. See if some of these over here. Um, let's see. 1882. Definitely could have been that one. Maybe some of these. 1884. So there's a few older ones right in here. 1885. 
So these would have been here, 1888, 1887. <clears throat> so these could have been here. Let's see, let's go over here and look at this. Anyway, he dives behind a stone, and then he runs in a dead run for the fence and dives head first. 1901, 1902, 1905. Do you hear that? Do you hear the church bells? I love it. Let me see. 1923. See, there weren't a lot. There, there just there weren't a lot out here for him to hide behind. 1906. 1905, <coughs> 1900, can't make that one out, <coughs> excuse me, let's see, what is that one over there, that one might be older, let's see, anyway, so this back section, there wasn't a lot. And they were in the, they crossed the Catholic section, came over to the Jewish section, which at that time in 1899, there weren't very many of these stones out here. There just weren't very many out here at that time. In this section, in the Jewish section anyway. Now possibly he ran that direction back into the Catholic cemetery, which there's probably a lot more over there. There was a bigger Catholic population in that area, in that time frame. So, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me. It looks like to me, if he was going to run and dive over a fence, he would dive over that rock wall down there. So, maybe he did. Maybe the shooting took place back here. He dove behind maybe the first stones that I showed you. They were plenty big enough to hide behind. And then took off and and just dove head first over the rock wall. That tree right there is plenty big enough. Okay, so they sat on a bench under a tree. That tree right there is plenty big enough. It was probably here. There may have been a bench. Are we still in the, I think we're getting in the, I think we're getting into the Catholic section though. I don't know. There's another rock wall back there. He could have ran that way. That may have been closer. And the article doesn't say that he hid behind a Jewish stone. It just said they were sitting on a bench in the Jewish section of the cemetery. He could have ran over into the Catholic section, hid behind one of these stones, and then ran and jumped over headfirst over that wall back there. That would have been way more protection than jumping over the closer fence, which is that one. And it's just, I, that's not going to protect you. I just can't see him trying to dive head first over that for protection. But anyway, that is my story. And we are here at what is now Calvary Cemetery in 1899. It was called the Catholic Cemetery. And then right next to it, which now they've kind of grown together, really. They're just, you can't tell where one starts and one stops without reading the stones. But there was a Jewish section to the left of me over here. Catholic Cemetery to the right of me. It is now called Calvary Cemetery and it was called the Catholic Cemetery in 1899. So that is my story about a murder and a suicide that happened here in this cemetery in 1899 so i'll get another story together for you i'm thinking that tomorrow i'm gonna go up to deer camp with tim he has found 
an old abandoned cemetery up in the mountains and so we won't have any stories but we're definitely going to explore i'll probably do a video there and you can come um come along with us so until next time thank you for listening <music>